Hi, Paula. So uh, interesting developments here. Perhaps is Gaddafi finally feeling the pressure of the UN and this resolution? Um, what do you think this announcement means with the UK and France getting ready to enforce uh, this no-fly zone? Well, it certainly is an interesting turnaround of events. We've just heard from the foreign minister, Musa Kusa, saying that there will be an immediate ceasefire, that the country is stopping all military operations. He says that this is because Libya is a fully-fledged member of the United Nations, and as such, it is obliged to accept all UN resolutions. Now, he spoke just a few minutes ago here in the capital city, Tripoli. He read from a statement. He refused to take questions from any of us reporters who were there, but he did say that the country was offering all humanitarian aid, and he said it was obliged to protect foreigners and foreign asset interests. He also again urged for dialogue. He said it was important that all lines of communication were open, and he again urged the international community to send fact-finding missions here. We know that a African Union uh, delegation is expected later today or tomorrow. The foreign minister emphasizing that when these international missions come, they will be able to establish for themselves the facts on the ground and understand the Libyan position better. What this means, though, for the international community, we haven't yet had any response, but certainly we know from this morning's statement that the situation here in Tripoli has been tense. Officials have been concerned in terms of what it means if in the coming hours a no-fly zone is implemented. Now, Paula, there are fears that uh, imposing, as you were saying, the no-fly zone could end with a full-scale military intervention. Um, is that what people in Libya are worried about? Because I've, I've seen stories here that say that rebel forces uh, reacted with joy to the UN resolution in their Benghazi stronghold. What more can you tell us on that? Well, it certainly depends which side you're on, who you're talking to, and, and whose opinions you, you are taking. In Benghazi itself, the, the celebrations there have continued since late, late last night when that resolution was announced. Their fireworks, AK-47s, have been fired in celebration. People, they're very satisfied that the international community is finally coming to the assistance of the rebel fighters, although many fearing that it might be a little bit too late. Here in Tripoli, certainly a very different situation. People are angry, people are cautious. And it is interesting that the foreign minister has now stepped forward and called for a ceasefire because it flies in the face of what we were hearing from Gaddafi and his sons themselves. They were saying that they will react swiftly, they will react immediately, and they will retaliate to these international calls for a no-fly zone. Britain and France have been at the forefront of pushing for it. We have heard from both governments that they will be able to deploy their forces within the coming hours. That is why the expectation here on the ground is that we could see a no-fly zone being implemented as soon as today. But it remains to be seen what happens now in light of the foreign minister's comments. There were five countries at the UN that abstained from endorsing this no-fly zone. Among them was Russia, the Russian ambassador to the UN explaining the Russian position. In essence, a whole range of questions raised by the Russian Federation and other Security Council members remained unanswered, questions which were both concrete and legitimate, questions regarding how the no-fly zone would be enforced, what the rules of engagement would be, and limits to the use of force. Provisions were introduced into the text, potentially opening the door to large-scale military intervention. Responsibility for the inevitable humanitarian consequences of the excessive use of outside force in Libya will fall fair and square on the shoulders of those who might undertake such actions. If this happens, then not only the civilian population of Libya, but also the cause of upholding peace and security throughout the whole region of North Africa and the Middle East will suffer. There's a need to avoid such destabilizing developments. We haven't yet seen any difference in terms of the reality here on the ground since the announcement of the no-fly zone late last night and since this recent announcement by the foreign minister of a ceasefire. Fighting does continue in Misrata, which is the third largest city here. We continue to hear reports there of people being killed. At the same time, the town of Benghazi remains on high alert. The last word from the government specifically related to Benghazi was that it was not going to attack, but that its troops were going to encircle the town and it was then going to to send police and special units, specifically anti-terrorist groups inside, to deal with the situation. So really it remains to be seen what actually develops in the coming hours. Indeed it does, Paula. As you, as you were saying, uh, you know, a ceasefire has been announced and yet the violence continues. I'm sure the UN will be keeping a, a close watch on this. Oh, it's Paula Slea, live in Tripoli. Thank you. All right, now we're continuing our coverage of unrest across...